The visuals here are intended to help understand the story and may not accurately resemble the actual character or location. Some of the names in this video may differ from the localized name, but it shouldn't be too different for you to misunderstand anything. Hopefully. In the beginning, there was only chaos. One day, this chaotic universe collapsed and split into two worlds. Orpheus was ruled by the god of order, Regulus, and Chaos was ruled by the god of chaos, Igraham. Regulus, who had the power of creation, created the sun using the everlasting light, the ark. He then created the planet that can create life on its own and called it Arcasia. Regulus then created seven gods to take care of Arcasia and the seven gods started spreading the source of life throughout Arcasia. Arcasia became a world of life and death which coexisted in balance. Meanwhile, Igram's avarice towards the Ark was growing slowly. Contrary to Igram's will, a life of darkness was born in his world of chaos. The dark life started to divide itself uncontrollably and one of it became Petrania the star of darkness. Now the forces created from Petrania started to resonate with the Ark. However, the two forces were not meant to resonate and this started creating a rift between the two worlds. Arcasia was developing very quickly. Regulus divided the Ark's power and distributed it to the seven gods. The seven gods created continents and started creating different races. Procyon, the god of honor, created the winged race Razinus, which resembled Regulus the most. Crater, the god of wisdom, created a race with magical powers and called them the Silens. Aldebaran, the god of life, created spirits. Aktur, the god of earth, created the Titans and the Umars who were great at building civilizations. Antares, the god of fire, created the race Hal who were highly advanced and were able to craft high-tech weapons. Sirius created the ice race Tabers and Guiana, the god of harmony, created the Yozes who were able to communicate with all living species. Finally, Sirius and Guiana worked together to create humans. After helping Arcasia develop, the seven gods took their arcs and left Arcasia to live in the gods' world where they can watch over their creations from afar. However, peace did not last long. The Hals deceived Antares, their creator, and gained the power of the Ark. The Silens and the Razinus tried to stop the Halls, but the power of the Ark was too overwhelming. The Razinus had no choice but to sneak into the god's world and steal Procyon's Ark. With Procyon's Ark, the Razinus and the Silens were able to defeat the Halls. However, this made Regulus, the god of all gods, very angry. Antares was kicked out of the god's world and Procyon lost the ability to speak. The house who committed the greatest sin was wiped out. And finally, the winged race Razinus lost their ability to fly. After the war, Regulus no longer wanted the gods to be involved with Arcasia, and the great power of the Ark was slowly being forgotten. This war had its side effects. The war in Arcasia amplified the Ark's force, and the two worlds that had been resonating was starting to fall apart. Igraham, who always wanted the Ark, knew this was his chance. He bought an army of dark life and devils and invaded Arcasia. The gods and the Arcasians fought against Igraham's army, but the aftermath of the war brought unexpected consequences. This started opening up the rift and Orpheus was starting to suck Petrania in. 
Abraham had no choice but to stop the war. After Abraham's retreat, the seven gods offered their arcs to Regulus in the hopes of stopping the enlargement of the rift. Regulus awakened the arc's power, and this power was combined with Abraham's chaos to create a guardian. The first guardian Evergrace divided his power to create more guardians, and together they were able to stop the ever-growing rift. The guardians then went into hibernation, and there was finally peace in Arcasia. Arcasia was finally able to enter a period of abundance and prosperity. Petrania, on the other hand, was a different story. The creatures in Petrania started to kill each other for their own survival. However, someone was finally able to settle this chaos. Khazaros, who called himself the Abyss Monarch, instantly conquered the world of chaos with the demons he created. Igram started to worry that Khazaros would soon take over his world, so he brought his army of dark life and headed to the Abyss. However, Agram's army betrayed him, and Agram died to his own army. Just as Agram was dying, two pieces of chaos flew out of him and landed somewhere in Petrania. Khazaros, the new ruler of Petrania, did not notice this. Khazaros made the first Dark Lives the God of Darkness and ordered them to create civilizations on Petrania. They used the power of chaos and created the Dark Stars, the Sea of Abyss, the Black Flame, and the Red Moon. The Red Moon was actually a failed product of the Dark Gods trying to recreate the Everlasting Sun. The Red Moon still empowered Khazaros, but it was not enough to last forever. Naturally, Khazaros' avarice towards the art grew. Khazaros appointed some of his best demons as commanders and planned to invade Orpheus to get the Ark. Back in Arcasia, the most prosperous people on the continent served Regulus as their god. They established the Holy Land of Sacria guised themselves as God's messenger and ruled over the other humans. Sacrius Archbishop Thermir II has been holding on to an ancient crystal which he thought might be one of the seven arcs. He started to be interested in the long gone power of the arc, but he died without any progress. However, Thermir III found out that the other arcs were hidden in the ridges of Arcasia. He first received the first three arcs in the name of God's will, and then he found out that the other three arcs were located at the Queen's Garden in Rohendel, Mount Antares in Corazon, and inside the giant Domemic's body. Thermer III was blinded by the power of the arc and destroyed Domemic to obtain the arc. He also sacrificed his holy knights to obtain the Ark from Mount Antares. Once the Ark was removed from Mount Antares, it erupted and killed every living species near it. Finally, he invaded Rohendel for the last Ark, but the Silens were not going to give it up that easily. After Inanna sacrificed herself to prevent Rohendel's magic core from collapsing, the divine tree Elzowin passed on Inanna's soul to Ajana's body, allowing both personalities to coexist in one body. After earning immortal power from Elzowin, she was able to rule Rohendel to be a very strong country, even against Thermir III's army. War was about to break out in Arcasia. The giants, the Umars, and the spirits stood with Rohendel, and Sacria demanded the other continents to join them. At first, Shushire wanted to stay neutral, but Sacria offered the unquenchable flame, and to the frozen lands of Shushire, the unquenchable flame was an offer they couldn't refuse. With Shushire's support, Sacria built a strong enough army 
and this was the start of the Putin Cold War. Arcasia was being flooded with blood. This war was destroying Arcasia, which was once the planet of creation and life. But this destruction started to wake the Guardians. Evergrace, who was the leader of all the Guardians, was the first to wake up. He only had one thing in mind, and that was to protect Arcasia. He attacked Sacria, killed Thermer III, and took the Arx from the Regulus Temple. As more Guardians woke up, the Potent Cold War was coming to an end. The Guardians, who were born to protect Arcasia, started to discuss about what they should do with the Arcasians. Barkhan and Lu were the main Guardians that had different opinions. Lu wanted to trust the Arcasians and give them another chance. On the other hand, Barkhan disagreed and wanted to obliterate the Arcasians that already turned greedy. After much thought, Evergrace decided to give the Arcasians another chance. As the Guardians were preparing to go back into hibernation, a subordinate Guardian of Barkhan was killed by one person. Barkhan wanted revenge and went to meet this Guardian Slayer named Cardin. Barkhan thought this would be an easy battle for him, but after 10 days, this battle did not look like it would end anytime soon. Tectonic fluctuations started to occur, and black clouds hung over the sky. Then, a dimension cracked. The Dark Legion commander Kamin and his demonic army started flooding into Arcasia through the cracks. Kamin had no mercy and started to wipe out Arcasia. The Arcasians cried out to the gods to help them. The gods ignored their prayers. All hope was gone and the shadow of destruction began to cover Arcasia. Instead of the gods, the Guardians came back to fight against Khazaros' army. However, unlike the Guardians who were focused on just the war, Khazaros was creating another red moon in Arcasia. The red moon made Khazaros' army stronger and they started to overwhelm the Guardians. Things got worse when Barkhan turned to Khazaros' side. Khazaros was about to take over Arcasia. Just then, a sign of hope started to shine in Arcasia. Seven heroes named after the brilliant star Esther came to the rescue. Lutheran was the leader and was followed by Kadan, Ajena, Galator, Sien, Ninav, and Shandi. The guardians and the seven heroes started to fight back again. The clash between Kadan and Kamen made tectonic shift and Broshaza's and Ajana's magic pulverized the surroundings. Lutheran helped Evergrace fight against Khazaros, but Khazaros was still no match for them. Khazaros even broke Lutheran's sword with one strike. Evergrace told Lutheran to leave the battlefield. Evergrace then ordered the Guardian Mystic to bring the seven Arx from his hidden nest. Meanwhile, Galator was fighting Baltan, and after a long battle, Galator had no more energy to fight back. And just as Baltan was about to deliver his final strike, Lutheran showed up and fought Baltan with his broken sword. All the other heroes were losing steam as well, and the war was starting to favor Khazaros aside. Just when everyone was about to give up, Mystic returned with the Ark and delivered it to Lutheran. With the power of the Ark, the Esters were able to fight back Khazaros. More importantly, they started to lock Khazaros up. Light turned into sacred pillars and stroked the ground like spheres. Khazaros, unable to stop the seal, was forced to separate his soul and sent his soul back to Petrania. Barkhan, the guardian that betrayed Evergrace, also followed Khazaros' soul back to Petrania. However, the Esters were able to seal Khazaros' body. 
They then locked his body up inside Mount Antares, and the red moon that Kaiser was created was slowly losing its light. Lutheran then distributed the seven arcs among the Esters, and they headed around Arcasia. The war finally came to an end, or at least it looked like it. Mount Antares's lava was not able to destroy Kazaros's body, and his soul was waiting for the seal to break one day. The guardians concluded that the war was over and decided to go back into hibernation. The guardian Liu, however, decided to stay with the Arcasians and watch over them. Humans began to reconstruct the continents, and new countries started to rise again. The guardian Lu was recovering from his wounds at a garden. One day, Sien and his group asked if they could settle here. This land where Sien settled became Anet, and they started to develop their own unique culture. But one day, Sien couldn't control the power in his body. Lu tried to calm him, but this only opened up his own wound. Darkness spread from Lu's wound, and people started arguing. Argues became wars, and the bloodshed during these wars attract the devils that didn't make it back to Petrania. Sien and his army defeated the devils, but Sien realized how unstable he was. He didn't want to endanger Anitz, so he hid himself in the Winter Valley. After Sien vanished. Law and order was slowly created, and for 400 years, Anitz was able to become this beautiful country with their own unique culture. After the war, a half-devil, half-human race was born. They had no conflicts with other countries, but Sacria still carried out a mass slaughter against them. Under God's will, they wanted to wipe out all demonic genes. This half-devil, half-human race ran away to the cursed land of Paden and called themselves the Derens. They started to train themselves so that they can control the power of the devil. And after a few hundred years, they were able to hide their demonic nature and look exactly the same as other humans. However. Not all Derens wanted to hide the demonic nature. They wanted to use this power and attack Sapria. This conflict deepened, and the Derens split into two factions. Meanwhile, Rohendel was divided. The Silens of Senile fell into Brolshaza's enticement and destroyed the city. Azena exiled them to the nameless land. Azena made this choice because she was afraid that the other Silens would reject Zenile Silens after learning how powerful magic can be. Zenile Silens called this nameless land Vern and crowned Edelin as their queen. Sacria's new archbishop Darius. Kicked out the Thermor family for starting the Putinkul War. He then disbanded the Holy Knights and tried his best to rebuild Sacria. This radical reform also influenced the scholars working on medicine, magic, and science. Darius called them heresies and kicked them out of Sacria. After the scholars were kicked out, they wandered around Arcasia until they found the Crimson Desert. Nothing was growing on this desert, but the scholars found enormous amounts of resources underground. They decided to settle here and call it Artithine. There was one problem, though. It wasn't easy surviving in the desert. In order to survive, they started to replace body parts with machines and became so advanced they were able to evolve into a race with blue blood. They called themselves the Canines. They built another city called Stern 
and seek for further development and evolution. As the Ark was descending to the ground, it scattered a powder called Arcasium. Arcasium was a very useful resource that contributed to a rapid development. It was used to craft weapons, transportation, and was used in many more applications. Most of Arcasium was scattered on Yan, and Yan soon became known for their craftsmanship. Yan was able to accumulate wealth through trading with Rohendel and Burr. After the war, Lutheran returned to his country. Lutheran signed the friendship treaty with the Federation of Artemis, Jan, and Rohendel. This led to a peace in Arcasia for 400 years. Arcasia was starting to flourish and was entering their richest era. Arcasia had nothing to worry about, and the existence of the Ark was becoming a fairy tale. However, this peace was coming to an end. Kazaros' body, which was sealed under Mount Antares, started to resonate with his soul back in Petrania. This started opening up small chaos gates around Arcasia. Disaster was on its way, but the Arcasians had no idea. Now, it is your turn to find all the Arcs and help Arcasia fight back Kazaros once again. So are you ready to start your journey to find the Lost Arcs?